In timber design, it is very common for us to have beams that are simply supported and have a uniformly distributed load placed upon them. It is also common for those beams to have continuous lateral support at the compression edge. Because that is such a common case, it makes sense to derive some formulas that help us streamline the process of design. So in this video, we're going to illustrate how those formulas can be derived. And then in a later video, we'll illustrate how to use the formulas. But first off, we want to uh, say that here, we are considering the very specific case of a simply supported beam with a uniformly distributed load. And when we are designing a beam to support these loads, it is very common for us to have uh, the length of the span provided to us in feet, the, the load in pounds per foot, or PLF, and for our allowable stresses to be in PSI, and even our modulus of elasticity to be in PSI. And so it would be nice if we had formulas set up to accept these variables in these units and then give out the answers that we are wanting to get in the correct units that we want the final answer in. You will see how this takes place as we do the following derivations. The first thing that we need to do is De develop some equations for shear design. And we are doing that, of course, for our simply supported beam with a uniform load. And so we start from the basic allowable stress design formula. Fv prime must be greater than or equal to F sub V. And so we can manipulate this formula. We still have Fv prime on the left, greater than or equal to the actual stress. And of course, we want to find the actual stress in this beam at the cross section where the shear is maximum, because that will be causing the worst shear stress anywhere along the length of the beam. And so for a rectangular cross section, that actual shear stress will be 1.5 times V max over the cross sectional area of the beam. Well, since this is a uniformly loaded, simply supported beam, the maximum shear, V max, will be equal to WL over 2. So I have inserted that into this expression for V max. And then we can simplify this formula a little bit further and we get 0.75 WL over A. Then, solving for A, we get the cross-sectional area that would be required for that beam in order to satisfy our original ASD formula. And so, solving for A, we get A required must be greater than or equal to 0.75 W times L over FV prime. Now, it's important for us to check the units of this expression here because we want our answer to come out in units for area of inches squared. So let's do a unit analysis of this formula. We have pounds per foot for W, we have feet for length, and we have pounds per, per inch squared for FV prime. Uh, simplifying this formula, we see that the units that come out are inches squared, and that is okay. That is exactly what we want to get for our area required to satisfy allowable stress design. We now can move to bending. And again, we start with the allowable stress design formula. Fb prime must be greater than or equal to Fb and we can then substitute in for the actual bending stress the maximum moment along the length of the beam divided by the section modulus. That is equal to WL squared over 8. For a simply supported beam, the maximum moment is WL squared over 8. So I have substituted that in here, 
and that is of course divided by the section modulus. So now we can solve for that section modulus. S needs to be greater than or equal to WL squared over 8 times FB prime. Now again, we want to uh, do a unit analysis of this right hand side. We would like our answer to come out in units of inches cubed. And so let's look at this right hand side and we can see for W we're going to have pounds per foot. For the length squared we'll have feet squared and for FB prime we have pounds per inch squared. Simplifying this expression we see that we get units of inches squared times feet. Hence we must make some sort of adjustment to the feet units so that we convert everything to inches. We can see that over here, and this circled adjustment factor is 12 inches per feet. And so we, uh, by adding that factor, it will give us units of inches cubed. Hence, our original formula must be modified by multiplying times a 12, as you can see down here. Doing that and then simplifying we get this final formula, 1.5 WL squared over FB prime. Let's now move to deflections. We have delta prime must be greater than or equal to lowercase delta. If we choose an L over 240 deflection criteria, that must be greater than or equal to 5 WL to the fourth over 384 EI. And of course, this is for a uh, simply supported beam. This gives us the deflection at mid-span. And uh, I should also mention that in the uh, bending stress that we did before, we, we did WL squared over 8, and that was for the mid-span maximum moment. So don't lose sight of that. Uh, but, but down here, we're doing deflections. And uh, this is the expression that we have come to. And we want to solve for i. Solving for i, we get 5 WL cubed times 240 over 384 times e prime. And we, again, need to do a units check for this right-hand side. Here we have pounds per foot for w feet cubed for l cubed. We have pounds per inch squared for m, uh, e prime. And simplifying that, we get units of inches squared times feet squared. And we can see that we need to convert this by adding this factor of 144 inches squared per foot squared. And the resulting output would then be inches to the fourth, which is what we want for the moment of inertia. So we must take 144 and multiply it times this formula up here, we can see that here. Uh, and simplifying all of these numbers into a single number, we get 450 WL cubed over E prime. Now, let's summarize what we have done. We have found a formula for these three section properties for the beam, area, section modulus, and moment of inertia. These formulas are set up specifically for a simply supported beam with a uniform load on it. We have also set this up in such a way that we can put in units of, uh, for W of pounds per foot, length in feet, uh, the stresses and modulus in PSI units, and the output will be in inches squared, inches cubed, and inches to the fourth. This is a very handy way to do beam design when you have a simply supported beam, uniform load, and continuous lateral support provided for the beam. This is so very common in the design of a floor system or a roof system that this gives you a direct or fairly direct solution to the section properties that you need to find for your beam so that 
you have a safe design according to allowable stress design. We are going to see in a later video how to use these formulas and to do that very thing. This allows the engineer to be more efficient with their time and solve directly for uh, the type of beam properties that you need. Here are some notes that help us remember the things that must be in place in order for us to use these formulas. The formulas that we derived above cannot be used if we have a beam over multiple supports. Those formulas above cannot be used if we have point loads or uh, you know other types of loading other than uniform. And so it's important that you recognize the limitations of those formulas. The last thing I want to say is that the deflection criteria we used is for L over 240. And that's how this last formula for the moment of inertia was derived. If a person wants to use that same formula, but for an L over 180 criteria, you would simply use that formula that we already derived and multiply by 180 over 240. If, on the other hand, you wanted to use an L over 360 criteria, you could simply multiply the result of I required by 360 over 240. Hence, it's very easy to modify this last case uh, for other situations. Hopefully that's helpful to you, and as I said in a future video, we will illustrate how to make use of those formulas in an example.